What's up, folks? David here, TexasHornsFans.com. This is the part two of uh, my reaction video to the 2021 spring preview video that uh, the YouTube channel Texas Homer uh, put together and put out in collaboration with Eric Nolan of Inside Texas. They did a great job previewing uh, just a position-by-position -position breakdown of what we should expect to see in the spring and then by the spring game. Um, so this is just some commentary and, and going over uh, their thoughts and just kind of offering my opinions on it. Uh, definitely drop your uh, comments and opinions below. Let you know. Uh, let me know what you think of the video and what are you looking most looking forward to uh, out of the uh, position battles uh, in the spring. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Definitely don't forget to share it out. Give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and also check us out on TexasHornsFans.com. <laughs> So now let's go over to the defensive side of the ball. A lot of unique things happening on that side of the ball. And PK has a new scheme to implement as well. We have some new position types. So watch my PK defensive strategy video if you're unaware of these changes and you'll be able to understand it. Yeah, this is a good point too. Um, slightly different lineup here. I think the main difference here are just the two, two traditional linebackers. Let me move this little preview up a little bit. So looking at five defensive backs, uh, two corners, two safeties, nickel back, and then a weak side linebacker, and then the Mike linebacker, uh, and then obviously the four, the four down linemen are still more of a more of a nose, and then a DT uh, defensive end, and then still sort of kind of a hybrid defensive end outside linebacker type spot. Um, I believe one's still called the Jack. And one, I forget what the name of the other one is. Um, but, you know, slightly different than what we've seen before. Um, I think, you know, this kind of lineup still is better for what Texas has on the roster right now being um, being very thin at, at linebacker. So it'll be interesting to see um, the rotation and the depth uh, at uh, particularly the linebacker spot. So let's get right into the big boys on the defensive line. So let's start with the nose position. Nose plays in the A-gap in what is referred to as a one technique, just as a little refresher for the fans. How are things looking at nose with Keandre Coburn and Tavondre Sweat? Yeah, so the defensive line has a lot of bodies. Of course, there are some questions because not everybody's healthy. Uh, the known there, the constant, is Coburn, which is, we use as a standard of uh, a weight measurement on inside Texas. One, one Coburn is whatever uh, Keandre Coburn weighs that day. Uh, <laughs> right now, he's around 340 or so. Um, so he's a nose tackle, quintessential guy for that. Uh, squatty, powerful, quick, uh, surprising motor that runs hot. His duty cycle uh, gets a little out, out of whack because he plays so hard. Uh, but, you know, the value there is there's depth. So, you, you know, you can go play hard it, as hard as you can for six snaps and then get spotted by somebody like Devondre Sweat who suffers from the same thing. It can also be a standard user uh, measure of uh, weight. Um, sweat is limited. Yes. You know, obviously that's Coburn's strengths. Um, Eric, I think, was spot on with, you know, Coburn act definitely has the traditional size of a nose tackle, but still has the athleticism and versatility um, to to move around and, and, and be a nightmare to kind of knife through uh, the line of scrimmage. And, you know, with, with those two guys, I, I, that's what I hope we really see more of, uh, whether it's Coburn or Sweat in there, uh, just them individually uh, being able to create some chaos in the backfield without uh, needing additional help or, or pressure from a blitzing uh, safety or a blitzing linebacker. So, you know, the the, the more of that I, I think we can get um, is is just going to help the the pass coverage. It, that 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 pressure is is just going to help the the DBs. And I. I I I think we're going to miss Taquan Graham uh, more than we realize. I, I think he really helped Coburn out as well. Um, you know, not a lot of total tackles for, for Taquan Graham. I think I remember it being around 2022. Um, but I think he had like seven tackles for loss. So I, I think he quietly, you know, had a bigger impact than I think most people realize. But, um, yeah, I'm, I think you got to feel, you got to feel comfortable with, um, with, uh, 
Coburn uh, still in there, um, and also just given his his experience, right? Coburn has uh, has a lot of experience for um, for a guy who's still still as young as he is. Uh, Sark had said that he's out for the spring. He's not technically entirely out. He's he's out there participating in the walkthrough types type things. Um, he will be limited when the he, he won't be out there when the pads come on. Two fantastic guys for that uh, that position. Sweat is a guy that has been said from uh, staff sources would, would be a guy that gets reps at Alabama, uh, just to give you an idea of the upside there. There's a little Hassan Ridgeway to him. You want to see him play uh, more like Coburn. Uh, you know, want that motor running hot. At times it was Ridgeway taking plays off and Malcolm Brown that was that was kind of providing all the effort. Uh, if, if Sweat plays with, with constant effort, he's going to be an all-conference type of player. So, you know, the nose tackle or the, or the one tech, uh, that, that position's in good shape. With guys being injured, uh, you are seeing uh, Alfred Collins is going to play some one tech, uh, which makes a lot of sense, more so in passing downs. Uh, mm. Sawyer Gorham Welch uh, has been uh, playing at, at one tech as well. Uh, he's more of a three tech. That'll be interesting to see how a guy like Alfred Collins might fit there, you know, more in the middle. I'm, I'm not sure if Eric there is saying that he's being looked at at the nose um, or the the more traditional D tackle position, but a one technique is right there inside um, on the inside shoulder of the guard um, with Collins being more of a taller, lankier, more athletic uh, inside defensive tackle who could also play defensive end. I think uh, that that would be, that'd be pretty interesting there, but um, that'll be cool. If, if, uh, if Collins ends, ends up being one of the starters on, on the line. But, you know, you do what you got to do with, with guys uh, who are banged up. Good stuff, man. And once again, for the fans, defensive tackles playing the B gap, which is known as a three technique or a three tech for short. So don't get confused. Three tech just means defensive tackle. Yeah, that, that's a good point there. Um, talking about one technique too, but basically it's the one technique, the inside shoulder uh, of the guard, a traditional uh, traditional nose tackle in, in like a three, four defense lineup. Uh, would play, would play usually right on the center or on one of the shoulders of the center, sometimes shifting uh, to the one technique with A gap, B gap, and then a three technique would just be the outside shoulder of the guard. So basically what they're saying is the traditional nose is going to be lined up somewhere here. The traditional tackle is going to be lined up somewhere here. So And obviously there's a, a ton of variations on that. So how are the defensive tackles looking? I really like our guys at DT. Alfred Collins will be the starter there. There's no question about that. With him out. Ah, cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a cool definitive by uh, by Eric there. Uh, so uh, projection, Keandre Colburn at nose with Tavondre Sweat backing him up. And then Alfred Collins starting right next to him uh, at, at the DT. So, yeah, that'll be awesome. And obviously we saw, saw some big plays by Collins uh, at the end of the year, especially in the Alamo Bowl. Um, so yeah, that, that'll be really cool to have a have such a big-bodied, versatile, quick guy like Colburn, and then more of a uh, taller, longer, really blocking nightmare uh, uh, with Alfred Collins, who isn't that kind of you know you, you remember when Malcolm Brown was here, you know, kind of a perfect big body, squatty uh, nose, uh, and then Alfred Collins, um, you know, I, I would even expect maybe to 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 see them shift him around some or at least limited with his wrist injury. Uh, Vernon Broughton has, has stepped in. Uh, Vernon is one mm -hmm. of the best uh, interior pass rushers the team has. The staff is very excited about him. He's great feet, uh, great mobility. Uh, that basketball, you know, he's supposed to be a basketball star in eighth grade. Everybody thought he was going to be an NBA player. Uh, then he quit growing at 6'5". So that, that's when he switched to uh, football. He quit growing at 6'5". But, but he still has that, that both basketball feet. Um, tremendous upside because he's never really had strength and conditioning uh, like he's getting now. Um, sort of on a longer developmental curve than Alfred, but tons of upside. Uh, he can play three tech, one tech. He can actually even play uh, the, the jack role if they if they had to. You know, maybe if they were going with the heavier set uh, goal line, short yardage. Uh, talented, talented guy. Behind him is uh, Moro Ojimo. Uh, Ojimo played defensive end. He was sort of miscast last year, but he did it for the team and actually started to play well. Uh, yeah, that's a good point about him uh, being kind of miscast. And I, I think there were times where we saw Ojimo make make some big plays and step up, and then he just disappeared for, for games. <laughs> He's your penetrating three-tech type. You're not going to ask him to take on blockers. You're going to ask him to knife through. Um, you know, I think he's probably old enough to vote now, which, you know, 
congrats to you, Moro. Uh, <laughs> but just good player, good program guy. Um, and so they have a lot of bodies. You know, I'm probably even leaving out people. They've got, they've got so many uh, in the interior. Uh, so this is definitely something. It's a, it's a bit of a embarrassment of riches that PK has to work with, uh, and these guys kind of fit what he's trying to do too. Our interior defensive linemen are going to be a huge strength for us this year. And we have uh, two new position types in PK's defense that replace the traditional defensive ends. They are called the Jack and the X back. Okay, so opposite the Jack is 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 called the X. That, that that's that's what I was wondering. So yeah, that's that's cool to know. Uh, it seems like the Jack though is still kind of that traditional or more a hybrid uh, defensive end outside linebacker. What um, what we saw from Joseph Osai last year. Sure. So what are we looking for in the X backer position and who's starting there? Yeah, the X backer is basically the Joseph Osai position from last year. Uh, it's a pass rush. Okay, so looking at it opposite that I thought the the X is more the the Osai uh, position outside linebacker that also has zone drops at times. Uh, Ray Thornton is coming in uh, from LSU. Who, That's right. You know, that was always the evaluation for him coming out of school. Uh, out of clean was his position. Uh, he bounced around a little bit of LSU. Uh, very, he's a team guy, you know, played some three tech even for uh, LSU, which is entirely out of position for a guy that weighs 245 pounds, but that tells you his toughness. Uh, it also tells you that he has some lower body strength to him. Mm. Um, you know, these guys, the staff is preaching professionalism. Uh, and I think Ray kind of exudes that from what I've heard. Um, come in ready to work, try to be a leader without overstepping your boundaries being new. Uh, but he has the athleticism to, to at least test these tackles. Uh, the, the tackles need need a test. You know, uh, we don't know if if the offensive line's getting better or if Ray's, Ray's getting better. They're, you know, they kind of offset each other. Uh, but at least they, they have somebody, a veteran with strength to go up against. Uh, so he's probably going to be your starting X. Uh, behind him is Prince Dorba. Uh, Dorba has a lot of talent. Ah, yes. he's, uh, he's had some good practices. Yeah, he's probably the guy that I'm looking at. Probably, the, probably Alfred Collins, and then uh, Prince Dorba uh, would kind of I, maybe be my number two most intriguing guy on defense to see um, if he's actually going to step up and get some reps or to to watch his progression throughout the year. So, yeah, that'll be interesting to see him if he backs up. Um, if he ends up being the number two at the X spot. Um, but yeah, you know, seeing, seeing what kind of rotation he gets, that'll be interesting. Um, this is definitely his time to come up and, uh, and earn some snaps. Uh, cause you know, he's, he's going to play quite a bit this year, even if Ray is the starter. Uh, -oh, uh -huh. you said another magic name in uh, Prince Dorba. That's another <laughs> fan favorite. So what's the word on Dorba behind the scenes? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Dorba's probably a bit more athletic than Thornton as a pass rusher. Uh, and you know, more athletic uh, as his own dropper in space. He's also smaller and not quite as long. So, you know, your, your change of direction skills are typically going to be better. Um, you're not going to hold up against a run as, uh, as strong as a more mature Thornton. Uh, but he, he does have some pass, pass rushing upside. You know, you might see him, you know, in the smaller package they've got. I think they've even said it publicly. They've got a nitro package uh, that that would be where you you'd probably see Dorba as, as your starting X. Cool. Now let's go to the mm -hmm. other side of the defensive line for the. So, yeah, I mean, really interesting there, but also just kind of a, you know, two, two new guys. Right. So um, that'll be, they both seem like, you know, the, um, the body type for it, but um, you know, kind of, kind of unknown there, but a super important position. Jack position. The Jack is a bigger player than the X-backer, and he's more concerned with run-stopping and being disruptive in the pass rush. I know Jacoby Jones is at one, and I thought Ojomo would back him up, but you said he's at defensive tackle now. So how's Jacoby Jones looking at Jack? Yeah, well, this is this is, uh, this is well-deserved by Jacoby Jones. You know, he was sold at, you know, when he flipped from OU, uh, he was sold as playing defensive end uh, in a four-man front, and then Orlando properly, uh, properly stuck him at four-eye, which he was ill-suited for. Uh, then he got to play defensive end uh, last year and started to play better uh, after overcoming some personal issues uh, that were out of his control. Um, he, he really started to play a lot better towards the end of the season. And, and you know, Ojimo did as well. Clearly, those guys were starting to be coached up. Um, now, he's, he's got to be thinking he's in heaven. Now he gets to play a stand-up outside linebacker role, which is still, still more defensive end than anything else. Uh, but they're definitely going to try to get him pass rushing. He's got good hands, uh, good feet, uh, and, and, you know, there's a good chance he leads the team in sacks next uh, next season. Do we have a potential number two player at Jack? 
Well, you know, it's very thin. Uh, it's a thin position dating back to the fact that they were going, uh, they, they were using four eyes. So when, when you go to a four man front, uh, you're lacking the bodies that you're looking for. They finally got the four eyes that they needed uh, in, in Alfred Collins and Vernon Broughton. And then, you know, they were, they were out headed to USC. Um, so behind, uh, behind uh, uh, Jacoby right now is Jet Bush, who they moved from Jack, or moved from X to Mike, and now over to Jack, just because they're they're so thin. You know that that tells you all you need to know about the transfers coming in. You know, uh, Ovi uh, Aguefo. I'm sorry mm -hmm. if I messed his, his name up uh, from Notre Dame, and then also Ben Davis from Alabama. Who does? Yeah, Ben Davis, a former, I think he's a former five star. Um, never really had the production or the or the time at Alabama, but um, was a massive, massive recruit out of high school. So, um, not sure if that was because of injuries or just because of Alabama. <laughs> but the, he'll be interesting. Staff expects to get. All right, that's a wrap for defensive line, and thanks for clearing up a lot of that for me, man. That was super helpful. So now. Yes, definitely thin at the Jack, um, Eric's point there. Um, just a lot of new, unproven, um, I think, bodies uh, on the outside, um, the X and the Jack. So, yeah, that's that's kind of concerning. But, um, you know, obviously a lot of upside. Prince DeBoer brings a lot of upside. Um, Thornton from LSU uh, seems to have been you know, like Eric said, misused too much on the inside um, as a more of a taller, thinner uh, defensive lineman. So maybe maybe putting him on the outside um, on the X is, is more his uh, his bag. And then uh, having to move uh, Chet Bush uh, over just to, just to get a little bit of depth in there is, is kind of concerning. Um, you know, and there's, there's the, the, the brand new guys like... Uh, what Derek Harris Jr. I think is is um, I think he's one of the early enrollees. So you know m maybe we see a little bit of him in the rotation too. We're gonna go into linebackers, and we're only gonna have two linebackers generally on PK's new defense: the middle linebacker known as a Mike linebacker, and the weak side linebacker known as a Will linebacker. So let's talk about Mike first. We know that Demarvion Overshone is our top linebacker, but he's out with a shoulder injury. So who's up next at middle linebacker? Yeah, Overshone. Unfortunately, they discovered a torn labrum uh, recently, and he's gonna he's gonna miss spring. Uh, very unfortunate for him. Uh, luckily, he got his feet wet at position last year, and we're you know mm -hmm. clearly he got a lot more comfortable as the season wore on. It's a big loss for the spring. You want him to get in the uh, familiarity reps with uh, PK's new defense. You, you want to get him uh, used to all the calls and uh, you know playing in the proper position. Finally, we're seeing a mic, you know, it's not, not as you've broken down expertly. Uh, the mic isn't uh, playing in the box as much playing to the field. If you ever saw Malik Jefferson playing in the boundary, uh, when your fastest defensive uh, lineman getting absorbed in the boundary, instead of playing out in space and drove you crazy. Uh, here's our chance to enjoy, uh, rejoice a little bit. Uh, Overshown as a supreme athlete, we'll be able to play in space, but he's out uh, in his place is David Benda. Benda. Yeah. I thought Overshown was, was to me the biggest pleasant surprise of the defense last year um, moving from safety to linebacker just with his kind of bigger body uh, length uh, but still bringing that speed and I, I thought I just thought he got better and better uh, as the season went on and made some some really big individual plays you saw that uh, quick highlight there from the West Virginia game on that third down where he uh, where he just uh, blasted through and, and made a solo tackle and even if you remember the you know, the uh, closing sack of the uh, Oklahoma State game where Joseph Asai um, was able to chase down um, uh, Sanders, the quarterback, it was really uh, it was really Overshone's uh, blitz uh, in the middle that forced Sanders uh, to scramble left, um, which, which, you know, just left it up to a foot race uh, for Osai. But if you go back and watch that play, um, I, I really think Overshone was the one that that caused him to to uh, kick out to the left. But yeah, um, it, it it's nice that even though the linebackers are really thin, that Overshone at least has a full year of 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 experience there. And I believe Overshone was the second leading tackler on the team last year, maybe third, something like that, just in terms of total tackles. So. 
I got to be confident about about bringing him back, but um, yeah, a little worried about you know um, brand new defense and third defensive coordinator in as many years. As, you know, might be if you put him in a straight line as fast as over shown, at least close to it. Uh, he's a good athlete. Um, definitely starting to get more comfortable out on the field towards the end of last year. Saw a lot of improvement over the course of last season. Um, he's got some significant athleticism to him, and he's you know that's number one thing. Do they have can they meet the athletic baseline requirements of that position? And Ben can. Uh, behind him is Jaden Holoby. Holoby came in with uh, there was a lot of uh, excitement about him last August. Uh, you know, along with Ford, we were hearing about Holoby as well. Uh, go watch him play uh, a high school quarterback and, and run down the sidelines, and you can see some serious uh, burst with him. Uh, he's a good athlete, good upside. You know, they recruited him to play H back. And uh, my first eval on him was, yeah, you might want to look at him at linebacker because linebackers are a lot harder to find. Uh, so I'm excited to see what he can bring uh, to the field. Um, even though Overshone's out, these guys are going to get a chance to grow uh, and, and improve uh, with more reps they wouldn't get otherwise. And our second linebacker is the Will linebacker. So what's the depth <clears throat> chart looking like there? Jalen Ford at one. And where's Jawan Mitchell in the mix? Yeah, Jalen Ford came in. I'm not sure when this when they put this video together or when they did this chat, but it, it might have been before Jawan Mitchell um, uh, entered the transfer portal again, right? This is his second time to enter in the transfer portal. But um, yeah, I mean, and, and adding to that, uh, uh, Adelio Deaway has entered the transfer portal, so the linebackers are just going to be super thin. Um, and I think the I think the linebackers are the weakest unit um, of of the team, but um, and 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 Mitchell was the leading tackler last year um, in terms of total tackles, um, maybe not solo tackles, but um, yeah, that, that that's going to be interesting to see. Um, yeah, to see who who steps up there if it's Ford. Been impressed last August, Tad actually had the the fastest ten yard split of all the linebackers, which uh, was a bit surprising for a guy that. Uh, you know, his, his fit is inside, true inside linebacker. Uh, so that explosive uh, downhill first couple steps is exciting to hear about. Um, right now he's a starting uh, the first string. Um, you know, he's got those instincts that you're looking for. I'm not, I'm not the greatest expert when it comes to diagnosing linebacker play because it's, it's sometimes it's a little above my pay grade. Uh, but you can see him making plays that a lot of guys wouldn't. Uh, you know, Utah wanted him. If you know how, uh, how, how well drilled and schooled uh, their defensive end is, their defense is, um, you know, that's an exciting player to get. That's, that's the type of school you want to steal a recruit from. Um, Juwan Mitchell was second team in the first practice. Um, you know, by the time you see this, there might be other news out there on him. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're not certain there. Juwan uh, is an interesting uh, So maybe, yeah, maybe Eric knows something. So, yeah, it looks like this was recorded before the announcement came that Juwan Mitchell entered the transfer portal. So maybe Eric got uh, – Looks like he got a uh, little uh, word of that, a little whisper, maybe that uh, he wasn't ready to announce yet. So yeah, that's interesting. But yeah, I mean, if if Mitchell leaves, I I I I think th that is a big blow. He's obviously got some stuff he's got to deal with. I mean, if you're if you're entering in the transfer portal twice within a year, um, I you know who knows what the issue is. But you know, M M Mitchell, I think has been a has been a terrific um, defender against the run. Um, that, I think that's where he excels. He's a big hitter. He's not afraid to um, get back there and just blow stuff up at the line of scrimmage. Um, he's n been not been very good at uh, at pass recognition and pass coverage. Kind of getting caught in no man's land a lot, getting getting bunched up with with other other defenders. Um, but you know what he's good at, he's very good at. So yeah, you know, but just the potential of losing another body at at, at linebacker. Um, and just with his experience, right? He he he, you know, was was hoping to bring back a lot of experience. Um, is is going to be a big blow. Character, uh, you know, he just has to stick with it. If he sticks with it, he's got some talent. He can run, he can hit. Uh, I think he was getting better at reading defenses, uh, but he's going to have to stick with it and compete. Uh, and behind him, you've got uh, Marcus Tillman. Uh, Tillman suffered an injury. Uh, yeah. uh, he's got uh, his freshman year hasn't. I kind of forgot about Marcus Tillman. Quite rebounded from that, or at least he hasn't to this date. Uh, but I think he's he's definitely looking more athletic than he had been at any time since the injury. Uh, I think he's just a little bit more down the depth chart because he doesn't have practice footage uh, for the coaches to go on. So he's going to have to earn his way up, but that's what spring's about. Uh, so let's not let's not forget about Marcus Tillman. 
All right, so we need to keep an eye on the linebackers with DeMarvion's return to Mike and some volatility over at Will. So that's a wrap on linebackers. So Yeah, good. I mean, just looking at these six names, definitely thin. Um, Overshone, obviously, you got to have a lot of confidence about him. Uh, Gabinda has has playing time. Um, they didn't even mention uh, Adelio Deawe, so just assuming, yes, he's transfers, he's gone. Jawan Mitchell there with a question mark. Um, let's assume he's gone. That leaves uh, Jalen Ford, Marcus Tillman, um, and then, yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, not not a whole lot of uh, in-game experience there other than other than Overshone. Um, who's the who's the true freshman? Um, Cooks, Ter- Terrence Cooks. Um, I I think he is an early enrollee as well. Texas had like we have like nine or ten early enrollees, something like that, from the twenty twenty one class. I think Terrence Cooks is one of those. Um, and, and as far as I know, he he projects to to at least be uh, one of these linebacker spots. So that'll be interesting to see um, what, if anything, we see of him uh, in the spring. Um, and somebody correct me if he's not an early enrollee. I think he is. And then to see, you know, what what rotation he can, because when you have when you have a group this thin, you, you're going to ha- kind of have to use <laughs> use whoever you can. So um, I guess it's kind of a good thing that there are really only two, you know, traditional uh, linebackers uh, in this scheme. But uh, definitely, I think the the, the weakest unit uh, of of the team heading into this or for the spring. Let's move on to our defensive backs. There should be a lot of fun stuff going on here. So defensive back is easily the most exciting group as far as position battles go, and there's still a lot of dominoes left to fall. So, Eric, what can you tell us about our DBs this year? Yeah, well, if you're going to call yourself DBU, you better have a lot of defensive backs to go around, and, and Texas does have quite a few this year. They still have the leftovers uh, from the 2018 class. They don't want to call them leftovers, holdovers uh, from the 2018 class. Uh, and then, of course, they've got uh, the, the, the new transfer, graduate transfer, who could be a starting cornerback in pretty much any country in the, or any school in the country. Uh, so there's a whole lot for uh, for PK to work with, and uh, and Terry Joseph, and Blake Gideon. Uh, you know, now it's just about getting all the guys in the right parts, figuring out your rotation, seeing who can do what, uh, and and getting them schemed up. So corner has to be our best position battle right now on the entire team with Deshaun Shark, Jamison, and Josh Thompson as the current starters. With the twos are McNeese State transfer Darian Dunn, and then Keaton Crawford. So what can you tell us about? The- yeah, cornerback. Man, you got Josh Thompson and Deshaun Jameson uh, mm-hmm. coming back as starters after. Yeah, I would figure Thompson and Jameson would be, you know, starting at um, at either corner. But I don't know if they're saying that they're battling it out for one of the corner spots, and then I, I don't know. We'll see. After I think they had good junior years. You know, cornerbacks do get beat. Fans. Real quickly though, I really thought Josh Thompson did a great job last year moving to corner. Um, just overall, re- really from week one, you know, he I, I thought he looked uh, really natural at corner. Remember the beats uh, more so than the wins. Uh, those guys played pretty well last year, especially in a tough conference uh, in a new scheme. Uh, but you know, Darian Dunn comes in. There's there's competition. Uh, and Darian Dunn might have the, uh, the he might be the most uh, prototypical corner on the roster as far as the NFL standards go. Um, you know, locked up Tylen Wallace a couple of years ago, which, you know, that's, that's saying quite a bit. Texas hasn't had a corner that's been able to do that necessarily. Um, so there's going to be a steer, spirited uh, competition between those three. They're all NFL athletes, without a doubt. Uh, mm-hmm. Jameson's quite the playmaker, uh, done sticky in coverage for, and has good length. And Thompson's a hell of an athlete. Um, this is going to have downward effects on the rest of the secondary, I think, because, it, you know, if one of them uh, loses out, he might be the, the best option at, at nickel. Uh, and then let's not forget about Keaton Crawford. Keaton Crawford, I would uh, bet the mortgage on him being a starting quarterback after this season. Um, wide receivers hate going up against him. He's physical, talks a lot of trash. He's got that East Texas dog uh, that you want to you want to hear about. Um, and so you know he's got upside. And then he's like a 10-600 guy in high school too, so he can run. Uh, I've always likened him to Terrell Brown, uh, former Longhorn, uh, played with my Niners for a number of years. Hmm. Uh, got a lot of similar North Mesquite. Terrell Brown was a great running back in North Ski. Or attributes. So yeah, cornerback is is pretty damn loaded in a conference where you, where you have to be loaded. It's going to uh, help the defense uh, elsewhere. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if uh, the the third corner ends up at nickel or, or okay. not. Nickel has its own little battle going on. 
Yeah, that's what I thought. So they've got Josh Thompson at at, at a one at one of the corners and Shark at, at the others. So Keaton Crawford, Darian Dunn. I hardly know anything about Darian Dunn um, other than, you know, uh, smaller school. But, um, you know, th- it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see how he holds up um, in the Big 12. But good point there by Eric is that, you know, maybe – Maybe the the number three guy um, ends up playing or rotating a lot uh, as 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 the nickelback as the fifth DB, but uh, that'll be interesting. So I I think you got to be pretty confident about the two starters with their experience. Obviously Jamison and then what you know what he can do in the return game, but um, just bringing in bringing in experience. The 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 youth excuse is out the window. You know I I, I think for this group uh, now. You know, especially in 2019 when they were so young. So, you know, this this uh, that that youth uh, excuse has got to go out the window. Corner is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, next up is field safety. Just a quick thing. So, field safety has to play in more space. So he's the safety with the most range generally, and you're going to need to be quick to stay on a man in that much space. So we have Jaron Thompson who is starting there currently, and who's number two? Is it? Early enrollee JD Coffey. I know Brendan Schooler moved to that position. So what's up there? Hey, I forgot about JD Coffey, uh, another true freshman. That's that's one of the early enrollees. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, Jaron Thompson came in late, got his hands on a lot of passes. Uh, definitely shows that he's he's got good eye discipline, good uh, good instincts. Um, it's basically what he looked like in high school. Uh, the only reason that he wasn't coveted by every school in the country uh, is just top end speed. Um, sometimes an overrated attribute uh you saw um he kind of has the attributes that that uh Kwiatkowski had done well with at uh at, at uh Washington um just love the player man he's hard-nosed uh physical uh good change of direction uh there's a lot of versatile things you can do yeah he lacks a little top end speed but he makes up with it by seeing uh by seeing the game uh, in an advanced way uh and JD Coffey is very similar you know JD Coffey was you know, comparing J.D. Coffey to, to Jaron Thompson before Jaron Thompson was even signed. Uh, I'm a fan of these guys. Um, instincts are, are kind of a harder thing for the novice fan to pick up on. I, I kind of include myself in that. Um, it, but when you see it, you know it, and those both those guys have it. So they make up for that. Yeah, they're not they're four six guys, uh, but they play four four because of the, uh, their their mental capacity. Uh, and then Brendan Schooler. What do you have? Like four picks or 70, 75 tackles as a freshman at Oregon. Uh, that's impressive. Uh, even, you know, you could always say Dylan Haynes had four picks, but uh, I don't care if you're a true freshman or a freshman uh, ha- having four interceptions, uh, 75 tackles in the, in the Pac-12, you can obviously play. Obviously, a guy likes to run around. Uh, he, he's pretty physical. We saw he's, he's pretty physical for a wide receiver. Um, so, obviously, physical on special teams as well. Um, so, yeah, you know, we'll see. You know, put him back there. Uh, I don't think he's as good as Jaron Thompson. Uh, but, you know, you like having guys back there that you can trust. Uh, that are savvy football players. Yeah, that's an interesting lineup right there. Um, Jaron Thompson, who who had had time last year, especially toward the end. J.D. Coffey, true freshman, and then Brendan Schooler moving over from from wide receiver, but still knowing that that he has experience uh, in a major conference uh, at at DB. So that'll be interesting to see how how those guys how those guys pan out. So some you know some some lack of um, uh, snaps you know there from uh, college snaps but um it, it's cool to see how confident eric is uh in in jaron thompson uh at that because that that that's an important spot you know especially in a pass happy big 12 um to have that to have that free safety because that free safety uh, uh has got to cover a lot of ground you know that's that, that they've got to make up a lot um as opposed to as opposed to the, the other one that's a little bit more of a you know, uh, kind of the one you use more as a as a run stuffer or or defending the run. And now we are on to the boundary safety, and boundary this safety, safety has an emphasis on run. I, I had, didn't even know that that's what it was called in in uh, PJ's defense, but yeah, boundary safety. Uh, that'll be cool. More of a, I guess, more of a traditional strong safety. Unstopping, and he generally plays in less space, so allowing them to be a little bit larger than the field safety. And fans are going to have their eyes. So that'd be like, that'd be BJ. Eyes glued to this position because it's two fan favorites. So first string boundary safety is actually BJ Foster. Well, I'm really excited that BJ Foster is going to be in the same position back-to-back seasons. Um, 
you know, he played really well last year. Um, not necessarily a guy you want man coverage, but which is why boundary safety is, is good for him. He's, he's uh, going to be hell and run support, one of the most physical guys yeah. uh, in the country, uh, maybe a little too physical at times. Um, and then not tasked with being a man coverage, uh, more of a cleanup hitter from deep, uh, where he's fantastic. He still has his speed. Uh, he's an enforcer back there. And he's got good instincts. He sees, the, he understands football. Um, you know, I think he's, I still think he's going to be a fantastic NFL player. I have no idea what's going to happen to him this year. I think he's going to play well. Uh, but I think he's going to really break out in the NFL where just his athleticism, his mentality, his physicality uh, are going to really be put to use in a consistent way. So I'm, I'm a huge B.J. Foster guy still. I know he yeah, g- great points there. I mean, the, B.J. is perfect for that for that spot um, where he lacks in – in one-on-one pass coverage, um, he makes up for it by being a, a, a fantastic run-stuffing weapon um, and using him on blitzes and, and just he absolutely can can lay the wood. But like Eric said, you know, maybe a little too aggressive. Sometimes we we saw him have that have the shoulder problem uh, before, and 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 sometimes yeah, you you can you can be a big hitter, but um, sometimes those crashes are they're just gonna as much as you can dish out, um, they, they can they can take a toll. So that's that's another another guy that ha- has a lot of in game snaps, a lot of starts under his belt. So when you when you put I think starting to put this whole picture together, Josh Thompson starter last year, um, Deshaun Jameson been a starter for two years, uh, BJ has has plenty of starts under his belt. So these are these are. These are experienced um, in-game snap, uh, you know, guys. That that that's exactly what you want back there, um, as opposed to a lot of a lot of youngsters running around not not having a clue what to, what to do. He hasn't quite had the five-star career that people want, want him, wanted or foresaw, uh, but I think he's a heck of a football player, and I think he's going to have a breakout season. Yeah, man. I hope this is the year that BJ puts it all together because I also think he could be a really special player. Um, it- and remember, a lot of times last year, BJ wasn't a starter, right? Um, he, 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 you know, being a, a starter as a DB is 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 a lot less um, impactful given the given the, the amount of rotations that that happen there. But um, but yeah, you got you got to be pretty confident about that. And then another very exciting name at number two is Tyler Owens. So yes. I get asked about him all the time, and I'm sure you do too. So. Fans are super excited about him. So what's yeah? I think I think what we've seen from Owens is is um, he, he's a lot more like B.J. Foster. He, he's he's more of a bigger um, kind of heavy hitting safety um, who you know isn't uh, isn't the best cover guy. Um, but yeah, that, that that's a perfect spot for those two guys. Um, and and Owens has been there in special teams. He, he's made plays, you know. But yeah, I, I, he's almost kind of like a like a kind of a miniature BJ Foster, not in size, but just, just in, uh, in experience to deal with Tyler Owens behind the scenes. Is he coming along? Yeah. The previous staff wanted to move Tyler Owens to linebacker. Uh, hmm. you know, he, he, uh, he didn't want to do that. Um, if, if there's a safety role that he can excel at, it's probably this one. You know, some of the things I just said about, uh, BJ Foster translate to him. Uh, if he wants to run the alley and be physical, that's going to be a good role for him. Uh, but I really like him as a cleanup guy with that speed and that length. Um, you know, it's more of a straight line position than uh, some of the other defensive backs because you're playing uh, everything is kind of in a straight line. Uh, you're playing at an angle. Uh, don't have to flip your hips as much. Uh, and, you know, he's got the speed. Uh, if he has the recognition, now that could be a question. If he has the recognition abilities, uh, then he can be, he can actually excel in that role. Uh, but he's going to have to wait his turn. <clears throat> BJ Foster, of course, like I said, sometimes he's too physical for his own good. He's only one hit away, one that he gives to somebody else from putting himself out of a game. Yeah. Uh, but Tyler, I think that's the role where he can excel as, as a safety is if he's playing from deep. Uh, but again, recognition is huge there. Uh, but, you know, obviously he has the speed to make up for somebody else's mistake. All right, fans, did you hear that? I got your Tyler Owens uh, question answered. So no more Tyler Owens questions, at least for one day. So, <laughs> um, and cool. So finally we have the nickel position. We have an exciting position battle here as well. It could be our new nickel. Yeah. The nickel, the fifth DB, uh, sometimes the most important DB, a lot of different schemes, different schemes are going to use it in different ways. You know, for some people, it's a corner for some guys, it's a safety, uh, for, for, uh, Chris Ash last year it was more of a linebacker than anything else. 
Adam Moore. I definitely think Adam Moore is going to end up being the starter here. I think he really, really did a good job of coming on last year. Or played it pretty well. It was odd to see Cook with the knowledge that Ash wanted to use it more as a as a linebacker. It was odd to see Anthony Cook move there. You know, the reason that Cook moved was just because they prioritized speed at corner. You know, man scheme, you got to be able to make up for a mistake at the line of scrimmage. <clears throat> and they didn't think that Cook had that uh, necessary that, that makeup speed. And that was really the knock, the knock on Cook coming out of high school, which is why, you know, I didn't think that he was a five-star when he was rated that high. I actually had James that had a Cook. But he has fantastic feet, fantastic cover skills, just doesn't have that makeup speed. So you know, if, if you're looking at Nicola as a third corner, he's a fantastic candidate for that role so so you know i always talk about fit uh, how does a player fit you know get these guys in the right fits well last year wasn't the right fit for him but right now it's his time now, now it is the right fit for him and sarkeesian's already speaking highly of him after one practice so and that you know he has fantastic cover skills so there's no doubt about that if they're asking him to cover more so than play force on the edge or, or, or in the run game then that's gonna that's gonna uh play to his, his strengths more so than maybe out of morris now, Adam Moore is a pure football player. Loved him coming out of high school. Great change of direction. He's down about eight pounds. Uh, you know, he'll be down 10 pounds from where he played last year. But the question I'll have is if, if it's truly a coverage position, uh, I expect Anthony Cook to win out. What does that do to Adam Moore? I think there's downhill effects there where maybe Adam Moore ends up uh, competing with our guy, Jaron Thompson. You know, that could possibly happen. Yeah, I, I hope that nickelback position is is expected to be more of a cover position. I, I definitely think with with um, with B.J. Foster there and and Tyler Owens and you know I, and I definitely think that's that's where the help is gonna is gonna need to be um, more of a more of a pure cover uh, DB. I think Cook is probably the leader, just with our uh, our feeling that it's gonna go to more uh, coverage uh, coverage type player. And then, you know, fans will be able to see that, yeah, maybe it wasn't a five-star corner, but you could be a fantastic nickel. And that, you know, nickel is hugely important in the modern game. Yeah, so Adam Moore, even if they do go to a coverage uh, scheme for the nickel, he he does have the change of direction skills and short area quickness that are going to help him out. Uh, he's, you don't want to see him carrying Marvin Mims deep, uh, but, you know, he's definitely going to work over tight ends in coverage. I mean, he's, he's got really he's got really good coverage skills, but more so towards a safety. <clears throat> Whereas Cook has good cover skills, more so towards the corner. And that's a wrap on D. So any larger topics you want to address about the new defense, give uh, fans more of a bird's eye view of what we're looking to do there? Yeah, the, the ultimate question is going to be the pass rush. Can you get that uh, sorted out? And that we won't know more about that until August. Uh, and even it, it might be tough to learn about that before we head into the season just because it could be, you know, sort of the uh, uh, offsetting players. You know, you got – is Christian Jones good or is Thornton good? Or, you know, we, we just won't know. We won't know that till the season. Uh, but we do know that they're going to have a really good corner play, uh, at least relatively speaking to the, uh, to the conference. Um, and that's going to make everything easier. You know, it's going to, it's going to buy the defense more time, defensive line more time to get to the, uh, uh to the quarterback. They're going to, there's going to be very tough to run against. We know that because the interior players are going to, going to be a movable, if not downright devastating, uh, to block. Uh, Alfred Collins is, is, you know, he's the top 10 overall uh, draft pick waiting to happen. Coburn's mm -hmm. movable, wow. Sweat's movable. Uh, so there's a lot of strengths to scheme around. Um, tough up the middle, makes things easier on the linebackers. Uh, and then you have the coverage guys. You have you, you have strength and coverage uh, on the edges and that nickel. And it's going to take some of the stress off of uh, coverage duties uh, for the safeties. So there's, there's a lot of good virtuous cycles here that you just would like to see them uh, uh, find a pass rusher. Uh, to complement the coverage and to complement complement the uh, the penis in the, in the middle. Yeah, de definitely. I I I really see the strength of this defensive lineup being the biggins in the middle and then the two experienced cornerbacks, and and those are those are your cover guys. Um, and then the ability to kind of use B.J. Foster or Tyler Owens um, more as a um, almost more as a third linebacker sometimes, um, whether you need to bring them up on a blitz um, or use them to um, to control the line of scrimmage um, a little better. But hopefully what we see, I think, from the, from the big guys in the middle, you know, mentioned that before, like Eric said, also pass rush, 
I like seeing the guys getting in there by themselves without help from a blitzing linebacker um, who takes away, you know, one of the offensive linemen. If, if we can see guys like Colburn Sweat and Alfred Collins win those battles one-on-one and, and knife through and just create chaos uh, in the backfield, that's going to help the DBs even more. So I, I look at it a, a little more uh, the opposite, I think, of what Eric said. Um, you know, pass rush or, or, or uh, pass coverage helping the, the pass rush. I, I see it uh, kind of more the opposite, um, looking at it from the line of scrimmage first, hopefully hopefully getting these guys back there and, and figuring out creative ways to, to um, you know, make the quarterback – throw when he doesn't want to throw, make him only go through first or second uh, uh, progression on on his receivers. So, but yeah, um, a lot of confidence there. Um, you know, obviously weaker, thinner at linebacker, especially if we lose uh, Juwan Mitchell and then assuming that uh, uh, Delio Deaway is gone. Um, but then, you know, m- maybe we get something from Terrence Cooks too, the, the true freshman. So, you know, overall experience there, I think, um, you know, it's, uh, you, you definitely have to have to be confident in that, that there's experience. Um, and then, you know, losing, uh, losing the guys that we did, Osai is going to be a big loss, you know, for sure. Um, over 15 tackles for loss, I think, um, from, from last, last season. And then, um, you know, like I said earlier, I think losing to Quan Graham is going to be a little bit bigger, bigger of a deal than I think a lot of fans, a lot of fans were thinking. But um, I like the strength up the middle. All right, we aren't done yet. We still got to hit special teams, and we know <laughs> Jeff Banks is an elite special teams oh, yeah. coordinator who's doing a lot of cool stuff in that phase of the game. So, what should we expect to see from Banks and our special teams units in general? Yeah, special teams is is largely an, an effort and discipline thing, and I expect effort and discipline uh, from <laughs> from these guys. He is intense. You give him 15 minutes to coaching, he'll get an hour's worth of coaching in. Uh, that's how fast he goes. He's rapid fire. Uh, I've talked to former players that he had at A and M. I talked to a former coach uh, uh, that he coached with, who said, "I don't know where he gets half the things he does on special teams. Apparently, he's, he's pretty innovative uh, when it comes to uh, coverage and fakes and all these other things." Um, so I expect special teams to be uh, at least start to restore itself back to where you saw Mac Brown's uh, teams uh, in the 2000s making plays. One can only hope, brother, right? Uh, is it still looking like Deshaun Jameson is going to be the returner? Hope so. Without a doubt, he'll be the punt returner, especially with uh, other issues that you, you know we, we addressed with the wide receiver. Uh, Jake Smith is the backup. He's got a broken foot. Josh Moore's out. Uh, yeah, I don't know who else they put back there. Ty Money? <laughs> uh, so maybe Jane Alexis, but they'll have to find a backup. Uh, but yeah, it's Jameson as long as he's healthy. You know, that guy, I mean, I've always compared him to a Dory Jackson. Uh, that's who you reminded me of in high school. Uh, and, and the only way you can be a Dory Jackson is if you're housing punts. And you know, Jameson's going to have a big year. Also, we have the new early enrollee punter from Pro Kick Australia and Isaac Pearson. Uh, when do you think he could challenge for the starting punter gig? Uh, I haven't heard a thing about him yet. You know, Buscemi's out, so he's going to have all the uh, time in the world to punt. I'm just happy that's that right. he's here. Uh, forgot about uh, Bischewski being out as well. It's a good point. And practicing and assimilating uh, when he doesn't necessarily have to be the starter. You know, they uh, they threw Dixon out there his first year. He's got to be wondering what the hell's going on. Uh, and then uh, same with Bischewski. He had no time to assimilate. He's just out there, and you know, you see them make these these boneheaded mistakes, but you can't blame them. You know, I saw Dixon. I was at Dixon's first practice, and one would go seventy yards, and the other would almost end up on I thirty five. It was it was crazy to watch. And then of course he had those those infamous. Uh, issues uh that year he looks like a big dude uh but yeah it's just good that he's over here uh you know a year before they need him for two years maybe good stuff man um any final words on special teams you know he's you know banks is, is very vocal you know i've got all these guys at alabama these first round draft picks are out there busting their ass on special teams so you are too uh and you know this texas uh these these players have never really liked that attitude um, you know, the, the program has had its issues, but the issues haven't been effort from the players or want to or being good teammates. Uh, so I think that's going to resonate with them. You're going to see starters out there trying to make plays uh, on special teams um, and they're going to be out there competing. You know, they, they don't care. You know, they don't care if you're going in the first round or second round or whatever. Uh, you're going to be out there. But the team, the, the players are cool with that. That's what, that's how they want it. Yeah. I, 
I think the number one thing I'd like to see from special teams is is just a better better kick return and uh, kick kickoff return and um, uh, kick coverage. Um, how many times last year did we see Texas just allowing the other team to start like at their own forty? Um, worst case, <laughs> and then uh, Texas just seeming to always you know having to go. Uh, 75, 80 yards uh, on their drives. So you know, overall, I, I, I think we need to we need to get as close to flipping that around uh, as possible. Um, it just seemed like you just like expected Texas offense to have to start, you know, uh, at their own 20 or 25, where it seemed like time and time again, no matter who the opponent was, um, they got to start at their own, you know, maybe 30 to 40 yard line. And I don't know some of that stuff. It, it those things kind of stick out in memory, <laughs> but um, you know maybe it wasn't as worse as I remember. But um, that just seems like one one big issue that that needs to get fixed. All right, brother man, that that was absolutely awesome, and I and I have a really good feel for the upcoming team thanks to you, and I appreciate you stopping by the channel, and I know the fans are really gonna love this one. So uh, that's a wrap for Eric from Inside Texas. Any parting words, Eric? Yeah, hey, I appreciate you having me on. Had a, had a good time. Always love talking horns. Uh, with, you know, such a rabid fan base. I'm excited for the fans to have this uh, this new coaching staff in place. The excitement is renewed. Talented program. Talented players. Uh, look forward to covering it and can't wait to be back. Hey, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I thought that was an awesome uh, spring preview, position-by-position position projections. Uh, they did a great job. So uh, definitely drop your comments below. I'd love to know what you think. Who are you most looking forward to stepping up this spring? Um, what do you see from the from the defensive battles that are kind of going on? But uh, anyway, check out uh, the Texas Homer YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, go over there, uh, follow, follow that uh, channel as well. And then uh, also uh, Inside Texas. But uh, don't forget to uh, join us uh, on Facebook. I'll leave a link uh, to our Facebook page uh, in the description as well. We have more than 60,000 Longhorns fans on that page. It's an awesome group. And then uh, don't forget to check us out on our website, TexasHornsFans.com. Uh, anyway, don't forget to like, share it out, and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Welcome.